Uh, Wig, I wanted to ask to start a um, couple of years now down the road having worn that badge. You must look back and think, how the hell did I end up at Leicester Tigers as a premiership winner and then the coach? When you consider your career and how many times, I think in your words, a few weeks ago where they were your closest rivals and just the team that you never thought you'd be at, how the hell did I end up here? I know you actually asked me um, the other day in conversation, but was there ever a club that you were like, you wouldn't play for? And I was like, well, all the way through, it was, it was Leicester because uh, when you're at Saracens and Leicester were the top team, you're, you're trying to knock them off and it creates a, creates a rivalry. And then uh, that lessened, um, but you still have that feeling because they're the biggest club. Um, and, but it's amazing how much I've packed into a pretty short space of time. I've been unbelievably bowled over by the support, both on and off the pitch. Um, so to answer your question, could I, could I quite believe it? No. Uh, am I incredibly grateful it's happened? Yeah. You said when you signed that I'm, uh, and now admittedly, you were playing at the time, yeah. which feels an age ago. Yeah. Still feel like I'm fit, I'm healthy, and I can contribute. Tigers is a great fit. Did you contribute? Do you feel like you leave having contributed? Oh, I, I hope so. I think that's that be judged by probably the people that I've played with and coached um, along the way. It's probably not for me to say. Uh, I felt like that. I felt like I had rugby left in me, and I felt like the fit was great because one, because um, Steve was there and, and I trusted him, but two, because of where the club was, uh, and I felt I could I could help it improve. As I said, that's up, up to other people at the club to judge more than me. But I say I've given it everything, uh, I've contributed. You know, like when you get me, you get all of me, um, and I hope that more than anything, everyone realizes that. This is weirdly your first interview since you retired from playing because the very first one you had to do was as a head coach two or three days later. Put aside the last six months, take me back to the 55 years that you were running around as a professional yeah. player. It, the record speaks for itself. I mean, every trophy possible in the domestic or European competition, you're the most capped player in Premiership history. You've done it at three clubs. What do you look back and say or think of your playing career? What was it? What is it? Oh, great question. Um, what was my playing career? I, I cared immensely about it. I realised pretty early on that you get one shot at it. I was like, you. Yeah. I took some great advice. Um, I was incredibly determined to make the absolute most of that. Now that probably sometimes came out in a lot of um, choice words or a lot of effort or a lot of um, overzealous um, training, arguments, debates, uh, but I just cared deeply about my career, I cared deeply about winning, I wanted to, I wanted to win and help the teams that I played in as much as possible. I think everyone that I've played with for a long time probably understands that, didn't always get it right. Uh, but I think I always try to get it right, and I think probably that's what um, what I look back on. That I probably eat most of what was in me out, and I suppose that's all you can hope for. Do you look back and have things that you do different? Absolutely. I th I'm not one of these people who goes, "Oh, I wouldn't change anything." I'd definitely change a decision in the last minute to win a game. I'd definitely change uh, certain things, but I, I wouldn't probably look back and think I could have put more more into um, different months, years that. Yeah, I think I've, I've probably poured most of myself into it. You, um, to be blunt, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but you will be more remembered as this Premiership legend than maybe your international career. Yep, agree. You've well, said not the legend bit, but definitely domestic. <laughs> domestic. <laughs> yeah, career. legend. Of course, I agree. Um, you've said openly you wish you'd played more for your country. Yeah. Do you think that would have impacted how much you played? Obviously, yes, you would yeah. have played less games, but maybe what you would have achieved in the Premiership? Oh, I was just talking to someone about this today, about how I was always, whenever I was away, I was always desperate to get back. When I got back and proved that I was a club man, yeah. that I was like, that that was, that you could never ever accuse me of like, that 
that that didn't matter as much if not more going out with your mates and the people you see every day the people that have helped you to get to the other side now um so i'd like to say no because it just might, might have been part of the reason why long we've not been good enough but that i didn't get what you maybe wanted out of it is that i was so desperate to get back and prove that that was that was where it all happens and that's what gets you places so um no i don't i, I think my personality that probably wouldn't have wouldn't have changed i think all three clubs have special to me and I like to think that I've, I've given them everything I can regardless of situation of what's going on elsewhere. It's a weird question because most people will say when they won a premiership it's their career highlight. You've got a week worth of them. <laughs> what, do you, is there a favourite as he sits there in a Leicester Tigers shirt? Yeah, I no, I, do you know what I mean? It's probably easy to say the last one isn't it because yeah. it's the most recent one. Um, the last one's the favourite because it was against Saracens and they'd not lost the final for countless years before it, learned how to win. Um, because I'd coached that year as well, I'd coached all that year, so the, the, I suppose the time consuming part of it, but then the amount of more care and, that you've got for the group and the individuals that you've tried to help. Um, so there's so much probably more storyline to it than just, just you and obviously being against um, Saracens made it made it probably extra special and the fact that no one thought we could no one thought we could have done it and, and we did it and yeah it's probably the last one and also the family's older so they all remember it Margot was at that one and the, the, all those sorts of things like the um, yeah that was that's a day that I'll definitely never forget you most I guess more often than not you ask people what they learnt when they come into a place I want to ask you what what did you, what changed you at Leicester Tigers? What did Leicester Tigers change in you? Because like you say, you watch from the outside for so long. They were a competitor for yeah. so long, a rival. What changed you here? Uh, well, I think, I think firstly the fan base lack of what, how big the rugby club is. Uh, I think what sticks with me off the pitch is the support when it was tough. So when it wasn't, when I got the job and we went, I think we won the first week, but I don't know what we were one from the next four, five weeks, um, and that was away. But the support as you were just passing people, either when it was in around Leicester, whether it was post game after a, a loss here, which we don't like doing, um, I think that would stick with me because there wasn't there was support, and I think in, that's probably quite rare nowadays. The fact that it is like it's win or bust and it's you are great or you're useless and everyone tells you that and I didn't get that I didn't get that at the start so um, yeah proper support I think um, I really appreciated and, and saw that so that definitely changed how I felt in and around match day and then on the field that the last time I gave them my full time big coaching opportunity so I get to work with this group of players that incredibly hard work in under under Steve and then taking over and that is experience that um, has will accelerate my learning like beyond belief and to do it in uh, with this pressure with this set of fans with this club um, in the knockout games we've been able to play in and all that stuff. so I mean from that point of view I've packed in on how many years learning into the into the last two or three. You mentioned the players, what makes this group? Um, and I said to Alad when we mm. spoke and you, about what you said yesterday, where there's 28 of the 30, 31 yeah. blokes in the room are here next year. Without hiding it, what I want people to know is it's not all doom and gloom because there's some coaching yeah. changes. This group is still here. The group that go out and do the work are still here. What makes this group special? Well, as a coach, I'd obviously like to take all the credit for, for what <laughs> the players do, but the reality of the situation is that um, it's the players who go and win the games. It's the players um, that go out there and run and make the tackles and make the hits and score the tries. That is, they are the most important thing. And where Leicester is incredibly lucky is the group they've got. So um, I don't know a group that in rugby gets on with it like this group does. All the new players that come in um, will come to me a couple of weeks ago. There's no whinging. Like, there's no one like 
there's no they just get on with everything like they can't believe it because every club or there's usually a section of the changing room that you call them sappers and they're usually sat there and they're, they're moaning about training or how hard it is or the weather or something else like just just because and you know, at this group it's just not like that they get on with it and they work uh, and they enjoy working hard they pride in working hard so as a coach you're going I've got a group of lads who don't complain who love working hard and just get on with it you're going how good is that so uh, I feel very fortunate to have worked with them Take me back to when you had the conversation with Steve obviously you left Saris at an incredibly difficult time for Saracens um, was there a time when you went no I'm not going to do that I'm not going to come and, and look, let's be honest, there was always the plan around you coming in yeah. as a senior player and then yeah. you're pretty meticulous in, yeah. I want to be a player coach. And um, Was there ever an idea of, no, not interested? So, I mean, I, I left I was under obviously difficult, difficult circumstances, but it was also COVID. Yeah. So the rugby was in a difficult circumstance. It was the extended season. Yeah. So it would be good to me they'd extended my contract to the end of that that season, but we were still in Europe and still trying to trying to win that. So you know, there was no favour there. It was like let's keep you to there. But I think what was the from there was three weeks between seasons, something, like that, something yeah. crazy. So um, it wasn't sorted until that like the last Harrison's game. Steve rang me before that and said, "Good luck today," and I cheekily said something along the lines of. There was a lot of international rugby this year. You could probably do with an experienced player. Um, and I don't know if you signed me out as a coach or what we've, probably not, we've not recounted that conversation, but we said, I'll bring you back. Um, I was in conversation with two other places and uh, with nothing sorted. And then within a week, he um, sat me down and had a big presentation as, as Steve does. And he was very thorough. And he had me at that moment of like, oh my God, this is. Uh, this is a project that you that you want to be part of, and at that point the other the other options fell by the wayside because um, it felt dead honest and it felt like it was it was going to happen. And that's credit to him because you had absolute belief in in him, and that obviously came true with what he did. It wasn't words. He he got stuck in and, and made the place better. So um, at that point there was no real doubts. There was probably a lot of excitement of like. Oh, this is this is gonna be different. This is gonna be a challenge. He told me where the club were and what it was, what it'd be like, and that probably still surprised me. Um, but then that probably makes it even more incredible that um, turnaround we've had in the last sort of two and a half years. Is that Premiership win the biggest success since you've been here? Oh, I think always winning uh, a trophy and something tangible probably counts as counts as the biggest success. I think. How short a period that is to take a team from the worst in the league to Premiership champions, but a team that had also finished top and been top all year. To beat the, the the best team over the last decade who haven't lost in finals, and I think I think you'd be hard pressed to find a story um, a story like that. So yeah, I think that has to go down as you know something that may not be repeated by by someone. I'm not sure there's anyone's going to go from worst the best most consistent beat a beat a proven winning team uh, and if they do then they've done well obviously you had to make the decision at a certain time and like you say that was a tough period back in feb or, or january whenever you made the decision to move to england there was a period there where you weren't sure you might stick around you might try and get the full-time yeah. head coach job role. why what was it in the end that decided it for you to go and be a a senior coach with the national team yep. seems a simple answer, but what was it? The, the reality is there wasn't like one thing that it was that. It was you, you weigh your loads up. Most important thing, family. Um, so uh, wife and kids, we live in uh, Manchester and the three-year-old in Margaret. My older two, Matilda and Fred, as a rugby player, incredibly lucky. You spend all this time with them, like you get to see them grow up. And Margaret has been a bit different for me. Been traveling and coaching and and the time that, that that takes from it. So there was this having real blocks at home with them um, was definitely a big factor in it. Um, the other factor in coaching is that I want to be the absolute best coach I can be. I want to do this for the next 20 years. I think I found what I should be doing. What I want to do is to the absolute best of my ability. I still think I've got 
um, loads to learn. Now, to lead um, a club this big, I think I'd want to be in a position where I know that right, this that is 100% the right time. Do I think I could have done it? Absolutely, right. But do I think that I can learn more and become even better um, and help uh, an international team hopefully achieve a lot? Then I think that's the that's the right thing for me to do at the minute. Definitely wasn't an easy decision, um, but one that I look back at knowing that I've given it due consideration. Do you have those aspirations to go and be a head coach again in the Prem or, you know, obviously yep. higher? So I always thought that I would want I would want to do it. And the last six months I count myself incredibly lucky the situation that I found myself in because it's probably confirmed that that's eventually what I want to do, but more than anything, I love coaching. So if that's assistant to an assistant to an assistant yeah. and you're coaching and you're busy then I'll be happy but um, do I want to improve and get to a level where uh, given the opportunity in five ten years time that that comes up and that's what I'll want to do then yeah that's that's probably the direction that I would love to do one day. There's always Australia if you want to move up in the world and um, have you worked with a better coach? Then Fred, your boy. It's funny, and it's all, well, my boy Fred has been taken in by the <laughs> by the lads um, as he as he has been. Ill, um, and that, that's places. why I asked, he's right? just yeah. he's um, incredible. So I give my speech yesterday in the changing room, which is incredibly difficult. You're leaving, and he comes in the changing room with me, and the boys he's trying to like sit in the back, and they grab him, they sit him in the middle of him, like, looked after him. They all know his name, they'll talk to him, they'll ask about his sport at weekends and he's a cheeky little sod so he's like into them, he's got better crap than JVP so he usually has a... Not hard. Not hard, so he usually has um, a good ding dong with him. Um, Is he now a Leicester Tigers fan? Yeah, fully in. Fully in. He actually got asked that by my wife, Lindsay, the, the other day, asked, um, you know, who, who are you going to support when you go to England? Who are you going to support? Well, well, Leicester. It wasn't even a consideration. So he grew up around Saracens. Grew up around Saracens. You know Lives what? in Sale. Lives in Sale. So he had all the Sale fans giving him stick. And, and he's chosen and, Leicester. And yeah, and he's had the, all this amazing experience at Saracens and they were great to him. But I think the way that uh, Leicester have taken him in and uh, how open they've been. And yeah, I think he's so he's, um, he's Leicester um, for, for I don't know how long, but he's, he's Leicester. What will you miss? most oh so I, I was I was having a look Matt Smith Mr Lester said to me before last time make sure you enjoy this and you just had a look and we just didn't quite manage to get that try at the end but the noise you were going oh my goodness you were like looking at the stadium going like, how good is this place but um, as with any rugby club any sport it's people like so many good people in the place, so many relationships that you forge that uh, through effort and hard work that, that mean something. So I'll miss the people, I'll miss the day to day. Theresa Carrington asking me, saying that you'll miss it, won't you? You'll miss coming in every day and you do, you miss, I'll miss the the relentlessness of club rugby and you, how you're all in it together. I'll, I'll definitely miss that. So probably not giving you a, what I miss the most, I'll probably give you a few things that I miss because probably hard to pin it down to just one. And then tell us exactly who you won't miss. Uh, well, the media manager. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Bondi, dick. yeah. <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> Useless at his job, giving me no help whatsoever. Um, no, I won't miss the, the early starts from on a Monday morning, um, staying away from the family a lot. Um, the driving home in rush hour traffic on a Tuesday or a Thursday when uh, when I have to do the, the trips, that's that sort of stuff I won't miss, but um, they were small prices to pay in terms of how much, how long the list is of uh, things I'll miss. Finally, the, and again, we might be harping on it and people PR spin or whatever it is, but the truth is that there's a lot to look forward to at Leicester Tigers in the years to come, isn't there? Yeah. You're right in the thick of it now, and by all means it helps yeah. you guys if Leicester is successful. There's parallels with Leicester yeah, yeah. and England being successful, but there's a lot to look forward to when you look at the squad, you look at the coaching coming in. It's 
it's exciting. Yeah, change is always like yeah, uh, when it's not immediate and you can't get a feel for it straight away. It's always natural for everyone to be a bit nervous or wonder what it's going to be like. As I said, like the most important thing is the playing group. Is the playing group incredibly strong? And does it have an age profile where it gets better and more cohesive the longer it stays together? Absolutely. Like I've been part of a club that was successful that had a group that grew up together and cared for each other and then grew on the pitch together. I think this is last tags have got that. Um, I think you can reel off the the names and everyone knows who they are, but they'll be the core of this club for a long time. Then you add in like the world world class. Um, players that were recruited, then I don't see less tags being anywhere other than right near the top of the league uh, for a significant period of time. Dan. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Cheers.